Hi, I'm Joe Earnshaw and today I'm going to be looking at the question of now the management ban has been lifted, are TV talent shows a suitable way of exposing our artists? So feel free to tweet throughout my presentation and if you want, you can add me in, use my tag at Jerd Um, uh, First of all, when using the term TV talent show, I'm actually going to be looking at three in particular. Uh, these are The X Factor, which is a singing competition which is televised. Voice UK, which again is a singing competition which is televised, which is quite similar to The X Factor, apart from a few differences. And Britain's Got Talent, which is a talent show where contestants can perform any talent they so wish. However, due to the availability of information and past examples, <coughs> I'll be mostly looking at The X Factor. Okay, so what's the issue that I'm going to be discussing today? Simon Cowell recently decided to uplift the management ban that was previously held on uh, X Factor and Britain's Got Talent contestants applying uh, whilst being in management contracts. Therefore, in the new up and coming series of The X Factor, applicants will be able to already be represented by artist managers. ITV confirmed this by releasing a statement that said an applicant can be an amateur artist, have had a management deal in the past, or can have a management deal now. The Voice UK, BBC's rival talent show to ITV's X Factor and Britain's Got Talent, <laughs> already allowed the contestants to be in management contracts. And perhaps Simon Cowell felt it was necessary to change the rules to try and compete with this show. But why has the management ban been uplifted? In an interview with BBC Radio 2, Gary Barlow stated that the reason for the change in the rules was that the X Factor uh, team were hoping for a more developed artist and a more developed group if they had management. And Richard Holloway uh, sort of backed this up. He's the head of entertainment at Talk Back Times. And uh, that's the, the production company that produces the X Factor and Britain's Got Talent. And he said, it just lifts the level of people that are on the show. In the past series of X Factor, there have been a number of contractual management issues that may have also led to the change uh, of the rules. Tracy Cohen, who you can see pictured on the right, was a contestant on the X Factor in 2009. And she reached, reached the judge's house stage. However, the News of the World discovered that she had already released a single and was in a management contract. This meant that lawyers had to spend valuable time from the show releasing her from this contract. Like Tracy, Katie Wassell, who is also pictured, was in a management contract and had already signed a record uh, deal in America. Um, it's important to say that you can't be in record deals when you enter. But um, uh, she was also had to be released from her contract. Um, there was also a bit of a public outcry when these two were on the show, as people felt that as they had management contracts and already had a go in the industry, um, it was a bit unfair that they were given another chance in such a high profile show. But what does this mean for us as artist managers? As there are many of us in the room who want to be successful artist managers in the future, I feel it is important to have a look at this next platform uh, to see how suitable it is for our artists. I'm going to analyse three implications that I feel we must all be aware of for entering our artists into this talent show. Firstly, I will look at creative autonomy or the creative freedom that your artists will get on the show. Secondly, I will look at the exposure that your artist has on the shows, and finally, the rapid rise to fame that your artist and yourself could potentially face after appearing on the show. These three implications have a variety of crossover points and I feel will all relate to themselves. When I first began looking at the subject of creative autonomy, I wanted to get a sort of feeling of what other artists felt about the X Factor. As you can see, Sting stated that they are either Mariah Carey or Whitney Houston or Boyzo, and they are not given any real uh, unique signature or fingerprint. And Anna Lennox stated, you wouldn't find a Joni Mitchell on the show. That is not the place. X Factor is a factory. Therefore, both of these artists seem to think that there's no real creative freedom or creative autonomy for, the, for artists on the X Factor, perhaps that the X Factor isn't creative at all. Now, when I started to look at the actual terms and conditions in more detail, I found this quote by Tinchester. This is taken from the contract for the X Factor Series 9, which you will be able to be uh, represented by artist managers. It states, that the producer's decision regarding all elements of the application, pro, uh, application process and the programme shall be final and binding. Therefore, the manager or the artist will not have the final decision and it is in the hands of the uh, producer. If you think, this broad statement covers a lot when it comes down to the creative process on the show, from song choices to costumes to how the show is edited and therefore uh, put out. Therefore, to allow your artist to be in the hands of the producer that you don't really know, or may not know at all, is a big decision for you to take. Emily Sander, British singer-songwriter who's seen a recent success, uh, recently said that um, many people told her to enter the X Factor, but she's very glad she didn't. 
He said, maybe if Aretha Franklin and Nina Simone were on the panel. But even then, I don't know. Uh, being an artist is, being, is about being free to do what you want. Um, this made me think about the judging panels that are on these shows. And I decided to have a look at them in more detail. And to be honest, I was actually quite surprised at how many creative and perhaps authentic artists were uh, judging on these shows. You've got Gary Barlow, and although I know he was in Take That, which is a manufactured band, he's arguably uh, up there with uh, some of Brit Britain's biggest and most successful singer-songwriters. You've got Jessie J, who although was only young, she has written for artists such as Chris Brown and um, Miley Cyrus. You've got Will I Am, another very successful singer-songwriter who was written for himself <coughs> and when he was with the Black Eyed Peas. And finally, the script's Danny O'Donoghue, who's also a singer-songwriter and record producer. Therefore, a variety of these judges on these shows have a very creative background, and they're creating their own material and their own songs. I was thinking, perhaps these singer-songwriter judges understand the creative needs of our artists more than judges with a more music business background, such as Simon Cowell and Louis Walsh, and the ex-judge Sharon Osbourne. I've also heard contestants this year, uh, as well as being represented by managers, can also perform their own songs, which is again great creatively. However, as you saw the, the quote from the contract, whether producers will allow them to do this, or whether they'll be encouraged to do this, remains to be seen. It got me thinking, is there a real need in the first place for creative autonomy for our artists? The music industry has for years been manufacturing artists and bands, <coughs> giving the people in them little or no creative input into how they are perceived and what material they put out. Daniel Knows of the Telegraph stated, by the 1990s, um, Simon, uh, executives like Simon Cowell had worked out how to print money. Instead of seeking out good musicians, they just got a few attractive young uh, boys and girls and mashed them into a pop group. Then they attached a songwriter, spent a fortune on marketing, and when the record came out, millions of people bought it from Woolworths for £20. The internet then changed this when Napster came along and broadened the whole music market, making it easier for people to find more smaller artists and ones that were undiscovered. However, is there anything wrong with us as managers still using this manufactured model? As long as our artists are happy and know that they will have little creative input, is that okay? Jonathan Shallot seems to think so, as long as our artists know what they are getting themselves into. He is the entertainment manager who launched Charlotte Church's career and then went on to manage Jamelia, Big Brothers and Endups. Uh, he argued that artists need to know what they were getting themselves into when, to, uh, when applying to go on these shows and stated, look, this is a karaoke show. Everyone knows the rules by now. I would like to finish this section on creative autonomy on this point. Cher Lloyd recently came out and said that she was in full creative control of her career. This may have been the case since she left the X Factor, but I, I'm thinking that maybe she had to earn this creative control back through success. And this is something that our artists uh, may have to be aware of that they may have to do if they go on the programme. She said, I don't have no one holding me back. No one ever will. I'm allowed to do whatever I want creatively. I might have come from a uh, reality TV show, but I'm not a puppet. So to quickly look back at the key main points from this creative autonomy section. Um, in the creative autonomy section, uh, of the time we're focusing on it, Factor, you have the possibility of your artists singing their own songs on this, on this next series. However, as I said, the producer's decision is final, and therefore this may not happen. Uh, perhaps we should look at the judging panels in a more positive light. These are some uh, successful singer-songwriters, and therefore may understand the needs of your, uh, your creative needs of your artist. And again, pop acts have been created for a long time with little of their own creative decision. Therefore, although there is a large difference with this process now being televised, as artist managers, should we really not choose this platform just because our artists want to get creative freedom? The next topic I will be looking at is exposure, and what exposure artists will get from appearing on the show. In Series 8, an average of 11 million viewers uh, tuned in over uh, 31 episode series. Therefore, there is potentially a lot of exposure for your artist on this show. It must be said, however, that there is around 200,000 applicants that apply each year, and therefore, to stand out from the crowd, your artist has a big, uh, big deal. Um, only a few acts gain success every year, um, and this is only normally done through the record label Cyber, which is Simon Cowell's. So what exposure is there during these shows? X Factor contestants and TV talent show contestants on the whole are not only filmed during performances, but also have interviews <coughs> beforehand and after. There is a suggestion that sometimes these interviews are selectively edited to make the contestant look a certain way, sometimes positive 
And unfortunately, it's actually um, suggested that sometimes even in a negative light. As stated earlier, the contract that you must sign to enter this competition says that the producer will have the final say. Therefore, you will not have the final say on how your artist seems to be put across in the final edit. There was even the accusation by some Britain's Got Talent contestants that they were persuaded to say certain things that they did not believe, or uh, uh, views that they didn't think they, they didn't believe. And therefore, this is a big uh, decision to undertake if you're going to put your artist on there. During these interviews, before and after the performances, there is often a focus on a background story, or a sob story as they're sometimes called. For example, a family tragedy, or perhaps a confidence struggle that the contestant has. If a contestant has a major background story, it will sometimes be featured for longer on the, um, the show than an artist who doesn't. It could also be argued that these um, stories that the applicant shares could also dramatically affect the public vote. However, I am not sure whether it is morally right to enter an artist or your artist into the show on the strength of a background story alone and hope that they will advance through the competition. Saying that, that is just my personal view. If a background story isn't focused on, then the contestant may feel the need to have a big or unique personality to gain coverage on the show. And this brings me on to my next point. <coughs> this is Steve Brookstein, and he won the first series of The X Factor. After winning the show, he signed to Sony BMG, and his debut single charted at number one. He then sold 250,000 uh, copies of his debut album. However, eight months down the line, and he was dropped. This was apparently due to Brookstein uh, declining to record a second album of covers, which again uh, goes back to the creative autonomy point. However, as stated, a lot of coverage of artists on the show is if they have a big or perhaps strange personality, and this was something that Brookstein generally didn't have. Although he had a great voice and won the competition, he was generally perceived to being quite dull. And now, with a commercial artist's personality normally being a very marketable asset, and with Brookstein not having a very marketable personality, was this something else which led to his release? After being dropped from the label, Brookstein stated that he'd recently supported Dion Warwick and was asked to support Lionel Richie. However, he declined this and decided to go the X Factor route. It made me wonder, if he had gone down the more authentic route and supported Lionel Richie and then gone on to achieve success, would there have been as much scrutinising of his personality as there one was on the show, or would he have been judged mainly for his talent? Personally, I think if he could achieve success, he should have gone the authentic way, as there wouldn't be as much scrutinising of his personality. I would now like to look at an act on the opposite side of the spectrum, that you may recognise. Um, this is Jedward, who I presume most of you know, uh, and they weren't really known for their musical ability when they were on the show. The twins have very loud personalities, I'm sure some of you would say very annoying personalities. However, the twins are now worth 2 million euros. This is mostly coming through advertising deals, with the duo working with a number of brands including MoneySupermarket.com, Roundtrees, Cocoa Pops, and Nintendo. And uh, they also appeared on Celebrity Version of Big Brother, which again brought the duo some revenue. But the ironic thing is, Jedward came sixth in the talent show, but been able to create a very successful career for themselves. Queen's, <coughs> Queen's guitarist Brian May stated what he believed was the reason for their success. He said, people love them or hate them, and that's always a good sign. If you're, in, you're indifferent, then forget it. Um, <coughs> Here are various X Factor and Britain's Got Talent contestants that signed to Psycho and then were later dropped. I'm not looking at the longevity of their careers here, as although some are short, RB artists like Shane Ward had a good six years at the record label. The point I'm making from this is that if you want your artist to go on the show and they're eventually signed by Psycho or another record label, and you stay with your artist throughout their time there, there is always a chance that your artist could be dropped. If this happens, you have to use the exposure that you, get, you have gained on the show to try and remain in the limelight and keep on building or perhaps rebuilding your artist's career. Therefore, key points from this section are there's potentially a large amount of exposure that your artist can have in a very short space of time. It would take a lot of time and effort to uh, reach the same size audience that you can if you enter a TV talent show. And selective editing is apparently rife in TV talent shows. Your artist is in the hands of the producers and how they come across to the public to a certain extent. Um, the applicant's personality is a very important, important tool to try and help gain your artist more exposure on the show. And the exposure you, you may gain from the show may not lead to a musical career, but more to a personality-driven career, as working in TV personality. And use the exposure and make the most of it. Work with other brands. Finally, I'm going to look at the implications of a rapid rise to fame. As discussed in the previous section, if your artist is chosen and covered on the show, they may be on an episode which has 11 million viewers. 
Not only this, but they, then they could be featured in magazines and papers and all across the internet. This will happen in a very short space of time. Twitter and Facebook accounts may pop up overnight, with fan bases for your artists created almost instantly. If your artist decides to get involved with Twitter, they have a lot of responsibility with thousands of followers at their fingertips. If continually successful in the show, your act may be faced with live performances of <coughs> public appearances, which they may or may not be ready for. Elton John thinks that contestants' careers grow too fast and perhaps not in the correct way. Therefore, th this is something to take into account if your artist is successful on the show. He says, the products, and the record comes out at Christmas and it's always number one. And then what happens? Why aren't they touring? Who's managing these people? Why aren't you building their career properly? That's what worries me. This may now change with the inclusion of artist managers who are at the artist's side throughout the whole X Factor and the whole TV talent show process. However, we are yet to see the outcome of an X Factor where managers have been allowed. Um, therefore, we are yet to see how much control they will get after the show and how negotiable the contracts will be. What I would suggest is that if your artist is successful from the show and goes on to sign a contract, uh, some, an area which you tr should try and have a major say in is in the building of a team around your artist. Hopefully, you'll be working with this team for a long time, and so are your artists, and you want to be able to have a successful relationship with them, and for them to have your artist's best intentions at all times. I would now like to look at a past example of an X Factor contestant. This is Stacey Solomon, who came third in the sixth series. She recently spoke out about how, after finishing the show, she would have signed any contract that the, the X Factor gave her. Um, and I believe just, this was perhaps due to her quick rise to fame. If she'd earned this success alone by gigging and touring and songwriting, would she really have just signed any old contract that he gave her? Um, after signing this contract, which she didn't have a lot of freedom, she, signed, uh, she entered a, a £100,000 legal battle, uh, which she had gone on to say that um, was worth every penny to release her from the contract. Therefore, if she spent £100,000 and thinks it was worth every single penny, it shows how important this um, contract negotiations are. Pop star example argued on the rapid rise to fame of X Factor contestants that they were shooting to fame without any real experience in the industry. Therefore, when they were dropped or things didn't go to plan, they didn't have a clue how to react. He stated that artists should look up to oh, yeah, potential artists should look up to people like Ed Sheeran and people who have earned their fame by gigging and touring and songwriting. Therefore, if anything does happen, then they can bounce back and uh, give it another shot. So, the main points to take from this section is that if your artist is covered on the show, they will be shot into the limelight and judged on various platforms. Online platforms will also cover the artist and find everything there is to know about your act. If your artist's performance gets a positive response, there will most likely be fan accounts across Twitter and Facebook. And uh, if continually successful, public appearances and live performances will have to be done by your artist. Do they have the experience for this? I am now going to finish with a quick how-to, which states what I feel needs to be discussed with your artist before entering them onto the show. Um, firstly, it's the how-to of how to deal with the creator autonomy implications that are on the show. Make sure your artist knows that they may not have a lot of creative freedom on the show before entering. Um, however, let them know that this may not be a bad thing. As we saw from the judging panels, a lot of these have great experience in singer-songwriting and um, there's a lot of good, like Simon Cowell's got great music business experience. Therefore, although it's scary if you put in the hands of these, it could work and it could be very benefic beneficial for their career. Let them know that to get the most out of the TV talent show experience, they may have to be manufactured. So go with the flow. It's similar to the previous point, really. As long as they know this may be the case from the start, they will be a lot more comfortable when this is happening during the show. And motivate your artists by stating that creative freedom may come with success that happens after the show. Let them know that um, they might be able to claw it back if they so wish, because they might be happy without any creative freedom. Uh, as Cher Lloyd stated, she is in full creative control of her career. Next, the how-to of dealing with the exposure your artist may get. Make sure your artist knows that their personality and um, background will be scrutinised. Do, do they feel that they will be able to live with the constant scrutinising that goes on in TV talent shows? And are they thick-skinned enough? Let them know that advertisement deals may have to be used. Depending on what their aims are, they may be forced into less of a music career, more of a uh, personality or TV-based career. Therefore, let them know this, that they may have to work with brands as well. Advise your artists to be themselves, but to be careful about selective editing. We all want our artists to be themselves and relax, but just make sure they know they are being constantly filmed. Although it is easy to say now, advise them not to say anything that may be taken and shown in a negative light, or uh, taken out of context. 
and that they may always be known as the X Factor contestant. After appearing on the show, your artist will most likely always have the X Factor tag and the history that goes along with it. If they are, a, if they are not a fan of the show, or not a fan of the way that the X Factor produces artists, this is not the right platform for them, and don't force uh, to enter it. Um, finally, how to, how to deal with a rapid rise of fame. Prepare, to be, prepare them to be pushed into the public fight. I would actually go uh, as far as saying that your artist should get a doctor's checkup before entering the show for any physical or mental health problems that may be made worse due to them appearing on a TV talent show. We all saw how Susan Boyle had to go to the Priory after becoming second in Britain to got talent for exhaustion. And being propelled to worldwide fame has a big effect on every single human mind and human body. Is your artist's quick rise to fame going to affect the longevity of their career? If you really feel your artist is extremely talented and a future star, do you really need to use the X Factor? I believe that this, if this is the case and you are confident in your artist's abilities, try and make it alone. It's not the end of the world if this doesn't happen. I feel that TV talent shows are going to be around for a long time, and therefore if it doesn't work, you can always go back and give it another shot on the X Factor. And make sure, um, does your artist have some basic experience of the music industry and playing live? If your artist has no experience of working in the live music industry, perhaps let them take a year out and go and gain some by gigging and touring. And uh, this may not only help them understand their business side, but also as a performer as well. Saying this, I feel that this is an age-related decision. Sometimes, a lot of appeal for an older act, or perhaps any act on these shows, is that they are raw, and have a great voice, but have never performed live to a big crowd. If this is the case, and you feel that they need to go on then, just make sure that they are reasonably ready. This last slide states how I feel we should approach these shows and their change in the rules. Firstly, wait. I feel that as artist managers we should wait. We, don't really, we do not really know what the situation is with this new rule change. Why not wait till this next series of X Factor is finished so they can see if there are any major implications that might occur for artist managers. Next, contract negotiations. I've stated numerous times throughout this presentation that your artist should be experienced in playing live and have a lot of experience. But are we as artist managers experienced to go on the show and be able to negotiate an attractive contract? If you don't think you are, perhaps you should, we should uh, go away and uh, get some more experience, or at least research and study, study the, the subject. Uh, and finally, don't lose your artist. I hope this will not be the case, but I feel we need to be aware of it. Could your artist decide that they no longer want to work with you during after being on the process of the show? If they go on to have a long, successful career, You've made, you may have lost, or tell me a, lot, a great artist, but a lot of money. However, similar to my first point, we'll have to wait to see if this happens. Thank you for listening. Any questions? Well, I've got Twitter going, so any questions? Emma? Um, talking specifically about the do you think that the introduction of judges that are quite widely respected for their creative work has had a positive effect on the rule changes, or do you think this is just something that's been waiting to happen? Um, I, su I suppose it has really, yeah. As well, I, the way that I'm saying that if you see that these are creative artists, or I suppose it's probably influenced artist managers who look after more creative artists, <laughs> artists that are songwriters, because um, they know that they can put them onto this application, and as they see that the judges may be songwriters and have that sort of background, that they're more confident their artists will be able to sing their own shows. Um, but I think that ma uh, managers that do manage like manufactured bands would put them on anyway, no matter who the judges were. Okay, Callum. Um, you did mention it slightly towards the end, um, but do you think that the X Factor introducing people with managers is purely to bring up the level of the standard of the artists and then perhaps when it gets to the point if they're in a position where they're going to win it, they're just either going to buy the management out or just encourage <coughs> the artist to drop them on contract terms. Yeah, well that, that's basically the fact that I think we need to wait. We need to just see what happens with artist managers and how they're treated during the show. Because um, that might be the case, but maybe you'll be able to negotiate a great contract with Psycho or another record label after. But I think we need to just wait, find out what's going to go on first. Hopefully that won't be the case, but yeah, I think we need to be aware of it, definitely. Helena and then Will. Um, coming at it from sort of the point of view of the producers, do you not think that there's a danger of, if they do bring in artist managers now, it's actually better to come third or fourth or second than it is to win? So if you have artist management, your management will be advising you to not, not to win. So 
Did you think that that could damage the show and can it from a TV production side of things? Yeah, um, yeah. As, but there, there is the chance that if you go on a, the show that you will be signed by Psycho or another record label, no matter where you come on the show, if you're, you're, you're a good prospect, they'll sign you wherever. Um, but yeah, so I suppose that could be the case. You might not, you might want your artist to get through to yeah, see the live shows and then go off, but uh, get sent off before they become known as the X Factor or get the X Factor tag. People don't really remember it. Um, but I suppose if you're an artist manager and you're on the show and you're seeing how many people tune in every week, it'd be probably quite easy to get caught up in it and then just say for your artist just to go for it and win it. Yeah. Um, but just your age, job, um, you didn't really sort of try to solve it. Having a little conversation about it there on Twitter feed, um, obviously everything's singer songwriter type stuff. If you're talking about um, a lot of pop artists that come out of manufactured stuff. So, as an artist manager, from your point of view, uh, do you think it depends on what genre um, the artist that you're looking after is in, depending on whether you're looking forward? Um, to be honest, we've actually seen a, a rise. I, I read a quote the other week that it was saying about um, Paul Weller. And he was having to go at sort of edgy contestants to enter the show and how they're not edgy at all. But that seems to be something that Simon Cowell quite likes. If an act goes on and they are more into rock music, but they manage to put, sort of go on and sing a pop song or one that attracts um, the following, that's what he quite likes. So I think, to be honest, as long as it's not too extreme and heavy metal or something, you could, you could go on and sing, you could advise your artist to go on no matter what genre they are, and they might do reasonably well and go on and do well, yeah. Uh, thought you were quiet. Question for fierce management, I think, in the back. <laughs> hey, if we've actually dropped an artist that people were going in the audition for this year at Factor. Um, I've just got a big question about how you think you work when it comes to mentoring stages. Because if you're not an artist manager and you're managing your artists, obviously, this year, so you're going to be advising them. When it comes to mentoring stages, obviously, you're going to be advising them. So, do you think you're in conflict there? Uh, to be honest, I don't think. Uh, the artist manager will get any say at all, really. I think it will be, as, as I said, the producer's decision is final. I don't even know if you'll get to really be in touch with your artist or see your artist that, that much when you get that far. I think you might try and shun you out and you might be able to negotiate a contract at the end and hopefully you will be able to, but yeah, I think it will just be down to the person, um, whoever mentors them, they'll get the top say. Can I just ask, would you put your artist on? Um, personally, Due to the people I would want to manage, I wouldn't. Um, but I suppose if I was managing a more commercial artist, because how easy it is if you've got really a lot of confidence in them, how talented they are, it's just too tempting to see you know, the, the 11 million views that watch every episode. So I think, unless I thought they were really good and they can make it on, the low, on their own, I think I'd give it a go. But then, like you said, the mentor gets all the decisions and it's out of your hand, really. Well done. Uh, thank you very much, Jeff. Well